Hello users and welcome to my tutorial on how to use Substance Painter effectively for Source. This is just my workflow. There are people that use much different workflows than I do, but I'm just going to show you how I do it and I can hopefully um, shed some light on how you can uh, go about doing things in Substance Painter. So uh, we're going to start with going to File New. And there's a lot of templates here. Um, so I know some people use the source uh, templates, but I'm not a fan of these personally. I prefer to just use the metallic roughness. Um, works better for me. So um, then what I usually do is I will import my FBX. So I'm going to hide this actually so you can't see what I'm working on. Okay. So here we go we got our model into uh, substance painter and as you can see it is fully um, fully UV'd uh, not very well but it is so uh, make sure that you have your model UV unwrapped before you import it into this so the first step um, is going over here to texture set settings um, your your look might be different than mine it probably will be so just look for texture set settings and then you're going to go over here to bake mesh maps all right and then there's a lot of options here uh check all of these boxes on the left um you won't need all these maps for source however uh the smart materials do rely on the information that these have so you want to do all these and um in ambient occlusion make sure you check ignore backface i don't exactly know what this does but somebody told me that it works well so uh, so I use it so then you're just gonna bake your mesh maps ideally you would have a name of your material up here and it wouldn't just be default material but mine is so as you can see that added ambient occlusion as well as other things to our model and it already honestly looks a lot better than it did so um, so that is the first step that you'll want to do and this next little section is gonna be basically a little a small short little tutorial on things you can do to get started in Substance Painter. So if you want to skip me just throwing some textures on this, you can skip to the time in the video that I put on the screen right here. Alright, so um, Substance Painter is a really simple program to use. It looks really complicated, but it's honestly super simple. So, um, so Smart Materials, you'll generally want to try to use these if you can. Um, there are materials I have a lot here, but um, you don't like if you can use a smart material you want to because they're more customizable and they will um, be more affected by the mesh maps that you baked earlier. So for example, let's drag steel painted onto this and you can see on the edges here it like wears and that's because of the mesh maps that we made. If you go to project you can see they're all here. Uh, this isn't that important right now, but basically yeah, you can see um, that, and then you can just delete it by pressing the delete key and we can just uh, you know play around with different materials if we want you can see more edge wear um, and really that's the main way to texture models in Substance Painter is just dragging stuff onto the layer stack um, obviously there are things that when you, or that you texture that you'll need to put a lot more work in on but that's um, that's the first uh, that's the first step really is picking your material so let's say let's say we want these parts to be like wood or something so how would we go about that well uh, what I would do is let's just pick the wood table I guess all right drag that onto the layer stack as you can see that overwrites basically everything however um, in order to like mask off uh, or you know put a texture on only certain faces you will go over here and right click it and you'll add the black mask and that will take it away but then what you'll do is this little black square will be uh, selected right here you'll go over here to the polygon fill tool and then you'll see excuse my awful modeling but um, you can see the um, actual polygons of the model so then you can just literally just fill and yeah that's really the main that's really the main thing that you'll want to do with Substance Painter, and then to get rid of this, you can just switch back to the brush, and 
Yeah, as you can see, I mean, like, this looks really bad, but, like, the materials on it look pretty good, actually, because, you know, these are default materials, and, um, yeah, but let's say that I'm happy with this, alright, so, alright, so, um, as for exporting this to source, this is going to be, uh, my workflow on it, uh, there is no one way to, uh, to port PBR stuff to source, but this is the way that I like to do it. So um, if you have any complaints with the way I do it, uh, you can say something to me, but I'm probably not going to do it any differently because this works for me. So first step that I uh, will do is I will export my ambient occlusion map. Now you can, I believe, drag this into some layer stack or whatever and then actually multiply it in Substance Painter, but I'm not a fan of doing that. I like to do it in Photoshop where I have more control, or at least I know the program better so I can uh, more effectively use it. But um, there's no really wrong way to apply the ambient occlusion just as long as it gets there. But I personally like to export it. So uh, you're going to right click it for my workflow and go to export resource. And I'm uh, hiding this window again so that you can't see it because uh, I don't want you to see what I'm working on. But uh, let me make a substance painter project folder here. All right, and then once you select the folder, you can, um, it will automatically export it. And that's the main thing for that. And then what you're gonna wanna do is go up to file, uh, export textures. <coughs> and then you're going to want to uh, open this and find your, I'm probably gonna be hiding this again so that you don't see it'll work on. But basically, you're just gonna find your export folder and um, and you're just gonna export to there. And then it will export all of them. And then um, that's once, you know, you'll only export once you've got all your textures applied here um, on your model. But um, that's pretty much all you need to do in Substance Painter. Um, you know, you, there's a lot of other things you can do in Substance Painter. Um, but really masking stuff off and using polygon fill is going to be like 90% of what you do. So, uh, yeah. And I do want to mention, uh, if you want to edit these materials, you can open these uh, folders over here. And, uh, you know, you can just uh, play around with the options. There's going to be a lot of options here. Um, you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's all that, that we're going to do in Substance Painter. So make sure to save your file. Be warned that these files uh, are usually pretty big. Um, it's not uncommon for, like, uh, a file with one texture in it to be, like, 40 megabytes. So... Uh, so be cautious of that, but, uh, yeah, once you've saved your file, you can, uh, you can just exit Substance Painter, and then, uh, move on to the next step. Alright, uh, from the next step in converting, like, uh, models textured using the PBR workflow to source, uh, I like to use, uh, Photoshop, but basically any image editing program will do. Uh, I would say GIMP is probably the free alternative to Photoshop. Uh, I, however, don't really like GIMP, but... Uh, I will I will try to tell you exactly what you need to do so that you can hopefully follow uh, along in GIMP. So as you can see here, um, we've got our Substance Painter folder with all of our textures. Uh, we really only need these. We don't actually don't even need all of these, but um, this is basically what your export will look like approximately. As you can see, our Painter file is 54 megabytes, but um, yeah, so these are the thing is you actually don't need height so you can you can just delete that um, so yeah so first up uh, we're going to put our base color into Photoshop so let's drag that in there alright so this is our base color it probably looks uh, like nonsense and it probably probably is nonsense but anyway <laughs> let's okay so First step, you're going to want to drag your ambient occlusion on this. Just throw it right on top. Um, and I believe you can do this in Substance Painter. However, I don't know how to do it. And I also prefer doing it in uh, in Photoshop anyway. So as long as you do the steps, it doesn't really matter. What you're going to want to do is set the blending mode on this to multiply. Uh, it's really easy in Photoshop. I don't know how other programs deal with it. And then you're going to want to set the opacity to about 50%. However, if you think that's too much ambient occlusion and it might be hard to tell 
for your first few models. I know even depending on what it is, it's hard to tell for me, but you can, you know, obviously just um, adjust. But 50% is usually a good starting point. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is put your metallic map above that. And then, all right, so you're going to want to multiply it. All right. And then you're going to um, invert the layer. How you do it in Photoshop is you put an invert modifier and then you create clipping mask and it will only modify this one. And then usually lowering the opacity of this one's good too. 50% is an okay starting point, but as I said, uh, it can differ depending on what materials you're using and exactly how you uh, you know, how you've made your material and stuff. But 50 is a good starting point, so if you're not sure, you can just try that. And if it doesn't, if it looks bad in game, then you can come back and adjust this. But that's basically all you need to do for the diffuse slash base texture, so you can go ahead and export this. Uh, we'll just save it as PNG Lobby Desk. And I'm going to be hiding this again because it's showing my projects that I'm working on. All right, so next step is the normal. Um, there's really not anything you really need to do here. You might not even need to mess around with this in uh, Substance Painter. So yeah, nothing really to say about this one. You can just go ahead and re-export this as something else or you can just rename it. Um, but yeah, that's all for this one. Next, we're gonna make the specular map. So you're gonna wanna drag your roughness map into uh, Photoshop or whatever image editing program you're using and so this is a little trick here so PBR doesn't really have specular mass in the same way that source does so you kind of have to hack one together um, but it's not that difficult so first um, you're gonna have your roughness map you're just gonna want to invert it um, that's the first step and then next you're gonna have to make it darker there are some ways to do that um, you can do it through a curve, however, I'm not really that knowledgeable in using curves effectively. So what I do is uh, mess around with levels and usually just darken it a little bit. There are better methods. I don't, I'm not claiming that this is the best method, but basically you do need to make it darker. And I, I'm going to explain what a specular map is because um, it might help you when you're making this. So basically it, it, um, it shows how shiny it is. Um, in simple terms, how reflective it is. Um, if it's 100% white, then it's 100% uh, reflective. If it's uh, pure black like this, then it's 0% reflective, and you know it's, it grayscales. So um, you'll want the really shiny parts to be really light and the not shiny parts to be really dark. Usually, applying a level like this does a pretty good job at it. However, there are times that it needs modifications, so you will very likely have to play around with this, or you can just experiment with curves. But either way, as long as you get it to what it needs to be, then you're good. Uh, I don't, I'm not really going to use this model, so I'm just going to say that that's good. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your ambient occlusion and you're going to want to put it on top of everything. Set it to multiply and then set it down to about 50%. Um, this won't always really do a lot because of uh, the, the modifiers, um, like the levels and uh, or, you know, a curve, but, uh, you know, it, you can tell it's making a difference here. It's making these parts darker, which will probably look better on the model. So that's basically all you need to do. This one does take a lot more manual, um, adjustments than the base texture. This is probably the trickiest one to get really correct. So, uh, you'll have to play around with this a lot. So that's all you really need to do for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Alright, welcome to the final step of exporting your PBR stuff made in Substance Painter to Source. And this is going to be the simplest step, because um, it's just stupidly simple. So, uh, I'm going to probably block some stuff out on this because uh, I don't want you to see what projects I'm working on, but uh, you're going to want to make the shader vertex lit generic for a model. There are other models, or there are other shaders you can use for models, but most models are going to be vertex lit generic. Um, and then you're going to look for your diffuse. That's going to be your base texture. Um, so let me go find that. Um, all right. So here you can see uh, I got my base texture. 
and uh, I'm not going to get too into this, but here you would put any self loom masks or um, or tint masks, um, but I don't have either of those, and it's not really that important right now, so I'm just going to skip over that. And then for a bump map, we're going to put in our normal map. All right. Um, for models, you don't need to put in the surface because the surface property is defined in the QC. So, so yeah, I don't really have, uh, this doesn't really do anything for models. Um, and then, actually, I, I skipped this, but, um, so whenever you are using a normal map, you cannot uh, define a specular mask like this. You have to put it into the alpha of the bump map. So you're going to want to uh, go find your specular mask that you made, and you're going to want to put it in here. And yeah, all right. So then there are things you can do, such as playing around with reflections. Um, you know, use cube map, and then if you want to have that mask be the actual mask, you'll put the bump alpha mask, and then that'll automatically set up for you. There's a lot of other parameters here. There's also fong down here. Um, by default, uh, by default, fong will use the alpha of the bump map, so you don't need to mess really. You don't have to enable it for Fong. You just have to turn on Fong, and it will automatically use that. Uh, there's a ton of other options here, but um, you know you don't even really need the cube map. You can just get rid of the Fong. You could get rid of the cube map, but uh, I have this, so I'm not going to. But that's really all you need to do, and yeah, you can just export it then. So uh, yeah, you save your VMT uh, wherever your model needs the VMT to be, and it will automatically put the VTFs with it. I'm not going to really go over how to, you know, know where to put it, because that was in my Blender tutorial, but, and there's other resources for figuring that out. So this tutorial is just to show my workflow from Substance Painter to Source, and uh, there are other things you can do with the Fong, uh, with the Fong exponent map. However, I, I usually don't mess around with that too much. Um, I will put something in the description that shows you how to make a Fong specular or a Fong exponent mask. I mean, if you want to do that. However, I don't usually do that. So, yeah, that's really all you need to do. These are the basics of exporting. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked it. So, this is my workflow. Don't judge me. Thanks.